Grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To the elect across the earth, we love you all. A special thanks to our partners. Uh, thank you so much for getting in the fight with us. Your prayers, your support, your sincerity when it comes to the love of Christ is, is so humbling. And uh, we are very humbled how fast uh, saints from all over the earth are, are joining the fight with us. And uh, we love y'all for real. We love y'all so much. Uh, this message right here. Is definitely one of the most important messages. I've ever preached in my life in Christ. If you're new to this channel. We are not a YouTube ministry. We are a ministry that uses YouTube. Okay, we study to show ourselves approved over here. We worship Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the glory of God the Father. And he is with us. He is the head of this ministry. I am your servant for this evening. Uh, welcome to the dinner table. This is what we call the dinner table. Where we enjoy the word of the Lord. He said, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus Christ said a revelation Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if you would just let me in, I will come in and have dinner with you. Do you want to have dinner with the Lord this evening? He's the king of the kitchen. He's the chef of all. He's not just the Lord of lords. He is not just the king of kings. He's also the chef of all chefs, and I am the one who will serve you the meal this evening. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, forgive us of all sins known and unknown. Wash us in your holy blood. May your word go forth with power and authority to break the yokes off of people, to destroy doctrines of devils, to cut the hearts of those that are wrong, to encourage those that are for you. Lord Jesus Christ, wash us in your holy blood. May we have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. And we give you all the praise, glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Saints of God, it is not a boastful title, and I really mean it. This could very well be the greatest sermon on the gift of tongues that you will hear in this generation that we're in right now. As far as people that are alive right now. I'm sure there's great men and women of God. That might not be known. That get great revelation. And defend the word of God with so much boldness. And I say thank you Lord for those soldiers. But this message right here is going to change your life. Saints of God. There's been a lot of spiritual warfare going on lately. Now I know that sometimes other people come to the dinner table. That have ulterior motives. Or they just come to spy us out privily as Paul said. I won't kick you off the dinner table. But if you ain't right with the Lord. You won't even digest the food properly. Get right with the Lord and come back to the dinner table. For you Pharisees and for you haters of Christ. And haters of us the servants of the Lord. And of course the saints of God all around the earth. We love y'all and we are so excited to enjoy this meal with you. We've been under a lot of spiritual attack. Uh, but a brother I was talking with, I let him know, I said, you know, I originally just did one video on Charles Lawson. But because of the hordes of, you know, the Baptists and the once saved, always saved, uh, bewitched people, they started to accuse me and say, man, you ain't got no videos about Charles. You just, you making that up. And then there was some that were trying to look for the videos out of sincerity and I said okay fine I'll make a part two and I'll add the videos but you know what's crazy you know what's crazy though is you remember the rich man who died with the poor man Lazarus he said to Abraham please let me go and warn my brothers about this place Abraham said they got Moses they got the word even if that man was to come back from the dead, they wouldn't have believed him. You have to realize something. 
even when I brought the actual videotapes of Charles Lawson speaking directly against the word of God, their ears are so blocked and their eyes are so blind that they still did not believe what they seen. Oh, you're taking things out of context. No, I'm not. And deep down, true saints of God know this. Charles Lawson mocks tongues. John MacArthur mocks tongues. Millions now on YouTube are calling tongues gibberish and all of these things. Listen, I made a third video directly for Charles Lawson from the Lord, weeping in tears. You think that's easy for me? You should have seen the way I felt in the morning when I woke up after uploading that. It was like, you know, my flesh tried to rise up. Like, man, why you do that video, man? They're rejecting the word anyways. Yeah, I mean, you crying like a baby on camera for who knows how many people to see. And the Holy Spirit comforted me. And my spirit, man, silenced the flesh. See, the word of God says you cast down imaginations. Because that was, that was that flesh trying to rise up. Because no man likes to cry publicly and all of that. But you know what? I don't care. I don't care about image. Those were real tears. Because I didn't know about his stroke or none of that. And when I released the two videos, it was not even a week later, he ended up in the hospital. And when I heard that man speak in that three-minute video clip where you could tell he wanted to talk about it, he, he wanted to speak more about the power of the Holy Spirit, but there was a barrier stopping him. I weeped, you know. I was in my wife bears witness. I'm crying like a baby for this man because I, I, I love Charles Lawson more than all y'all fake followers of Charles Lawson who came against this ministry false accusations you don't love that man because you're watching him come against the holy ghost and doing nothing about it he's a soul he don't he shouldn't go to hell he should go to heaven but the line is being drawn in the sand and i'm done unless god says otherwise i don't i'm not making no more videos for charles lawson and it's it, it's not about him there's thousands of false teachers out here and they're all on different levels you have some like Charles Lawson who I believe mean well he's an he's an older man so he's really set in his ways very hard you know that saying hard to teach an old dog new tricks it's hard when somebody's set in their ways especially if they're in a false doctrine it takes prayer and fasting and saints please pray and fast for him Okay, but that's it. I don't need to do anymore unless God says otherwise. I'm moving forward. Now, I'm going to continue to strike at these principalities and powers that got so many people bewitched. And saints of God, I am drawing a line, line in the sand as Jesus Christ of Nazareth commands me to. It's as simple as this. If you want to go over there. And mock tongues and say it's a bunch of gibberish. Mock the gifts and say they no longer exist. There's no need for a baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. That's a one-time thing. If you want to go over there. I hate to see you go over there. But this is how it has to be. And for the saints of God who know this is what the devil is doing. He is causing the great falling away by these doctrines. Those saints of God, I'm talking to y'all saints of God that know the gifts are still here, that no tongues is still here, that know we have to be seeking for the Holy Ghost, uh, that know we have to go into our upper room and seek for the Holy Ghost fire and baptism, that come over here. This is how it's going to be. The Son of Man didn't come to bring peace but a sword. This, this has to happen. So let's do it. Let's let's make that divine in line. It makes no difference if you're a subscriber. It makes no difference. Period. It makes no difference if you supported this ministry financially. If you're an enemy of the cross, your money is cursed. What did Paul say? Go to Galatians 1.
And I challenge you to be patient and stay with me in this. I challenge you to be patient and actually listen to this entire video. Because what a lot of you fake Christians do that don't study your word, that are not in Christ, you'll watch about 15 minutes, stop it, and make your stupid comment that has no scripture to back you up. You're led by your flesh and another spirit. But for the true saints of God, I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters out there. It's time for you to get a backbone. It's time for you to stay and uh, say is uh, enough is enough. How could you tolerate the foolishness going on all over face, Facebook and social media? People mocking tongues, calling it a bunch of gibberish. Goo goo gaga language they're saying. And you're going to be silent? You're going to be silent when they say the Holy Ghost now comes to people with no gifts? You're going to be silent? To me, that's just as bad as the ones mocking. I say if you're with us, then let's go. Line up. Line up to the right and left. And let's go ahead and do battle in the spirit realm. The battle of the gods. I know that we have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with us. The God of the universe. The God who died on a cross and rose from the dead. They got another God over there. It's another Jesus and another gospel like Paul warned us about in Corinthians. I say come over here where the ground won't open up on you. Now let's go ahead. Let's read what Paul said in Galatians. And we're going to get into this tongue sermon. I'm telling you this is going to be one of the greatest sermons on tongues you have ever heard. Through Christ all glory to the Holy Ghost. I get no glory. I get no, no nothing. But God gets the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just the servant he's using. Now listen to this. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 6. I marvel that you are so, so, uh, so removed from him that called you into the grace of God unto another gospel. Are you hearing this? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You hear this? But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You hear that? So remember that for the end of the sermon. Remember that for the end of the sermon. Because we're going to deal with this. We're going to settle this right here, right now about the gift of tongues. And if you know, and when you get cut to the heart, and if you're in agreement, you need to help spread this video to defend the truth of the gospel. It ain't about likes. It ain't about subscribers. It's about the truth of the gospel. You ready for it? In Jesus Christ's name. So we're going to deal with this. And all of this had to happen. The persecution had to happen. It was at a greater level. My wife and I are used to persecution. Because we're not cowards. We cry aloud and spare not. We lift, our, our, we lift up our voice like a trumpet and say, thus says the Lord. Jeremiah had to overcome fear. Paul had to tell Timothy, stop being afraid. Correct the people. Let them know what it is. And for the brothers and sisters with us, you cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Yes. Yes, God is angry right now. He is grieved right now. Because of the wickedness going on. Because of how many children of God are bewitched by these sorcerers on YouTube pretending to be learned elders. Foolishness. Once saved, always saved. Foolishness. We are not against grace. You can't try that witchcraft over here, y'all. Witchcraft workers. You try to do psychological manipulation and say you're against the grace of God. You think you'll be saved by your works? We never said that. We're telling you you're saved by grace and you can fall from it according to the scriptures. We're telling you you can't be on your fourth marriage fornicating with your wife and then thank God for the grace when you're done. It don't work that way. And, and see, all y'all did 
<laughs> was make the lion roar louder. Because what the Lord is speaking to me and how he visited me this evening, I was trembling in his presence. God is not mocked. Remember this. He has every single one of you mockers numbered. And only the blood of the lamb can get you loose for what's coming to you. And for some of you, it's too late. It's too late. I don't care how many times you block your ears like they did when Stephen preached to them. You can block your ears all you want. I will not stop it. What you have done was increase the roar of the Lion of Judah inside of me. That's all you have done. See, you got it mistaken. You're used to Christians being that timid lamb of God. But know this, that he is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he is no coward. Jesus Christ is no coward. He is coming back with a sword. Do not forget it. Oh, he seems like an angry man. You seem angry, brother. Right there tells me you don't know God. The word of God says God is angry with the wicked all day long. Read the gospel. Jesus was angry. When he flipped over the table, you think he was smiling? You think I'm cool with you blasphemers? Nah, this ain't the old me. I'm not that old man anymore. We don't fight against flesh and blood. I'm joyful in the Lord when I'm around my wife and children. I'm joyful in the Lord when I'm around the saints of God. But as far as you wicked blasphemers, you're worse than sinners. You're worse than people who don't know Christ. You're worse than people who haven't even heard the truth preached to them. But yet they're in the bars. They're buying prostitutes. You want to know why you worse? Because you dare pick this up and misinterpret it and deceive millions. Jesus Christ said, I would rather you hide a cold, but because you're lukewarm. It's better you, I spit you out of my mouth. That's the difference. So many ways, so many of these false teachers and preachers got so many bewitched. I know, I know, I know this ain't your average. You ain't used to this. You used to these effeminate preachers utilizing witchcraft on people, soft spoken. You can tell he's not a man of God by the way he speaks. I mean, anger ain't one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's exactly what they want to do. But if the Bible says that Jesus himself was angry, if the word of God says God himself is angry with the wicked, are you going to say God is evil because he's angry? God forbid. You better get used to it because the true saints of God are coming out of the wilderness. We've been eating locusts and wild honey in the spirit for a long time. And saints all over the earth right now are starting to come out of the wilderness. People you ain't never seen in your life. We ain't never done a selfie. We ain't never tweeted a tweet. But we got a word from the Holy One of Israel. And we ain't playing with nobody no more. You either get on the ark or go try to swim until you drown. You only have two choices in this. Now, the reason I'm angry with these false teachers is because they're crossing the line. Blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Mocking tongues. You better be careful. Saints of God, you better get in the Lord. And for the beloved, thank you for your patience as I'm rebuking the liars. Thank you for your patience as you're like, brother, yes, release, brother. But I need to hear this message. We will get to it right now. This is why it was serious with Charles Lawson. The minute he mocked tongues, it was a rap. And the minute you hear him mock tongues, it should have been a rap for you. John MacArthur and the rest of them, anyone telling you tongues is gibberish, you need to mark them. Pray and fast for them. Or pray to get removed, like Paul said. Makes no difference. So let's go. Now, now that that's done, that's my intro. That's my intro to this video. Let's see if you can stand in the fiery furnace of the Holy Ghost. Shout out to the saints who love the fire of God. 
Here we go. The tongues of the Most High God. An amazing gift from God. It is not to be idolized. It is not to be lifted up all high. Remember, what did Jesus say to the disciples? Don't rejoice over the miracles. Don't rejoice over the gifts. But rejoice that your names are what? Written in the Lamb's book of life. Didn't he say that? This is going to be a very well-balanced, easy to understand, liberating word of the tongues of the Most High God, of the gift of tongues. And I know, saints, you're going to love it. And I praise many of you out there to the left that have been bewitched. I pray that your eyes will be open. I don't, I don't want you to be an enemy. We want to be in one accord in this. We need to come together, but we cannot come together with heresy and blasphemy in the midst. It does not work that way. One accord means one accord. It means one mind. We're all in unison in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one doctrine. The gospel of Jesus Christ, not the traditions of men. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. My job right here is to prove quite a few things. My job here is, is to show you the basics, to expose the lies, and reveal the truth of the gift of tongues. The lies people say about it and show you the simplicity of it. You need the Holy Spirit. He's your number one teacher. He's the one that's teaching through me. It ain't me. If it was up to me, if the Holy Spirit left me alone to preach to you tonight w without his great wisdom, man, I, I sound like an idiot. It's the Holy Ghost. Now listen. Number one I'll start with is those that try to make you speak in tongues, right? Those that tell you if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost. They're wrong. They're wrong. And I know they have started a chain reaction on this side that's caused another reaction on this side. When they put it, when they shove that down people's throat, oh, you ain't spoken tongues, you ain't got the Lord in ya, right? Because that's just as wicked to say. And I'll show you why. Because they don't do it out of sincerity of scripture. They do it out of, a lot of times, witchcraft to try to control you. It's all about gnosis to them. They want you to feel like, oh, they got the true knowledge over here. The secret is tongues. And I'm not invited to the club unless I speak in an unknown, unless I speak in tongues. And sadly, a lot of Christians do fake tongues. But it don't mean tongues is fake. Huh? There's a lot of counterfeit $100 bills floating around, you know. So therefore, throw your hundreds away. You see how stupid it is? Just because they're counterfeit hundreds don't mean you throw away all hundreds. I speak in tongues. In truth. That's not me boasting. You don't see me on camera. No. I speak in tongues, though. It's a gift that God has given me. Many beloved saints in this ministry have gifts. Lioness, <laughs> she has gifts. But it's not for us to boast. We're just being honest with you because so many have been robbed of belief and faith. Now listen, they say that, right? But the scripture, I don't even have to spend long on that doctrine, right? Because we're going to deal with that end. And then we're going to deal with the truth of tongues. And we're going we're gonna to come against that lie. These once saved, always slaved people. And, and these people that deny the gifts and deny the tongues and call it a bunch of gibberish. I'm going to show you why it's so terrifying to even associate with those people. And if you love Jesus Christ, I challenge you to stay here and listen to this message. Rightly dividing, right? Listen to this. So... If you go to 1 Corinthians, if you go to 1 Corinthians 12, I got to be quick now. So let's, let's get it. Come on. 1 Corinthians 12. Look at what it says. 1 
1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. You, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit, call God a curse. Uh, of God call it Jesus a curse and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost right now you can also parallel that to 1 John 4 16 just real quick 1 John 4 16 in Jesus name I speak truth one thing is this I may not be able to win debates on athletic things and sports and cars but Jesus Christ has anointed me to preach the word of God with much power and authority. I know I'm not worthy of it. I'm not even worthy to loosen his sandals like John said. But the minute his blood sprinkled upon me, I became worthy. You see how beautiful it is? I'm just an object of how merciful he really is to choose somebody like me who don't deserve the anointing to be anointed to preach and teach. And I give all glory to Jesus Christ. Period. Now listen to this. This is 1 John 4 verse 16. It says, And we have known and believed the love that God had to us, that God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Now, the Holy Ghost is God. Right? They'll, what they'll say is, tongues is the only way to prove that you have the Holy Spirit. Is that true? Are you sure? Go to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 1. Let's go. Luke chapter 1. See, I'm for tongues. But I'm not for people using scriptures to try to put witchcraft on people. Right? We have to rightly divide the word. Precept upon precept. Period. Period. Well balanced in this. This is an excellent message from Jesus. Just... Be patient. Let's get it. Look what it says in Luke chapter 1. Verse 40. We'll say 40. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. She spoke her regular language. This was not tongues. But yet she was filled with the Holy Ghost. So why does she speak in tongues? Okay, you need more. Stay in the same chapter. Go to about 66. And they all heard and laid them up in their hearts saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. And prophesied saying, You hear that? You hear that? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. It does not say he spoke in tongues. It said he prophesied, which is another sign of the Holy Ghost being with you. It's one of the many gifts of the Holy Ghost. Okay. All right. We need more. Go to Corinthians. Come on. This one is very actually... Through Christ it's very simple to destroy this false doctrine. Look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And if you read prior to that he was talking about how some of you are the ears. Some of you are the eyes. Some of you are the nose. Can the nose uh, listen? Can the ear smell? You have to know your position in the body of Christ. Right? Now listen. And God has set some in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. Right? And after that miracles. And then the gifts of healings and helps and governments. And diversities of tongues. That means there's different types of tongues. And we're going to get into that in a minute. We're going to smash all of these lies with the word of God. Which is like a hammer the Bible says. It smashes the rocks to pieces. Forget Thor and his little bootleg hammer, little wannabe, Thor, little clown. We're talking Jesus Christ, right? But look what it says. Are all apostles, question mark? Let me ask you a question. Is everybody an apostle? No. Are all prophets? Can you imagine if the entire church, two million people uh, in, in a few cities are all prophets? Of course not, right? What is he trying to prove? Are all teachers? No. 
Are all workers of miracles? No. Paul is saying everybody is given things by the Holy Ghost. Some are called to be apostles. Some are teachers. Some are just helps. Their calling is to help the men of God by supplying their needs, by washing the feet, by providing finances. Those are helps. You have others that are teachers. Everybody has an assignment. Right? But look what he goes on to say. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts. Yet I show unto you a more excellent way. What was Paul saying there? Not everybody has the gift of tongues. Period. So if you've been bullied and abused by these other fake ministries and different weird denominations that try to bully you into a corner where all 150 of them in a, in a Sunday church is all speaking in tongues. And you're just sitting there like... Eh. And they look at you funny. Like, what's wrong with you, sister? Why don't you speak in tongues? Are you living in sin? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you unless you speak in tongues. That's a lie. That's a lie. Now, if you're living in sin and the Lord ain't with you, then yeah, that's right. But what I'm saying is, by the scriptures I just showed you, that's all you need. See, you don't always need 50,000 scriptures to defend the faith. Because most likely, if they don't receive it after just five, you need to walk away anyways. Because their mind has become a, a cold rock that blocks out the truth of the word. Their ears have been blocked, the Bible says. That's why the Bible says, let he who have ears hear. Everybody got ears. So why would Jesus say that? He's talking about spirit ears. I pray that your ears be open to hear what the Lord is saying through me right now. In Jesus' name. So right there, Paul is saying not everybody speaks in tongues. Okay, now that was actually quite easy to deal with, but tongues is still real though. And there are a lot of them, even those in that false denomination that tries to force people to speak in tongues and try to intimidate them, right? But there are some in there that are actually speaking real tongues though. So be careful. Don't act like you're the Mr. Tongue Judger. Like, like, that's what Charles Lawson said. I have yet to believe that I've heard of... Who are you to say that, Charles? That's, that's an arrogant statement. Like, you absolutely know for sure that that's all the tongues you've heard in your whole life of being a Christian. You've never heard a real tongue. How do you know? It don't matter if 95% of the people in his life spoke fake tongues. What about the five that, that, that spoke it real? But because he was so focused on it being gibberish, he mocked real tongues. That's dangerous. Saints of God, this is dangerous ground we're at. And that's why I'm bold in this message. That's why I seem aggressive the way I am. Because... You know, one thing, there was another man who spent a lot of time to study the way Jesus spoke. See, a lot of times we don't study the way Jesus spoke because there's no exclamation points and certain things sometimes, right? But a lot of times Jesus spoke very boldly. You think, you think he was always like, stop being afraid. It is I, beloved, please stop. You don't think Jesus Christ as a man. He's almighty, but he was in the flesh as a man. You don't think Jesus spoke to his disciples like, stop being afraid. Why are you afraid? You don't think he never did that? Then you don't really know Jesus. There was times he was meek and humble. And there was times where he was bold, flipping over tables. And it's healthy to know both sides of the Lord. Oh, come on. This is such a good word. Now listen. We just smashed their doctrine right there. But at the same time, I'm not against what they're saying. Tongues is real. And it is evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. But not every time. Sometimes prophecy is the evidence. Sometimes a word of knowledge is the evidence. Sometimes laying on of hands and healing is the evidence. You remember what Paul said? Now I'm not going to go crazy deep in it. Paul said, you know, you shouldn't really be trying to get tongues like that, but rather you should prophesy, right? 
Because he said prophecy is for the edification of the church. Tongues, he said, is for those who don't believe. But he goes on to say, if, if, if an unbeliever walked into your congregation and 200 people are all speaking in unknown tongues and nobody's there to interpret, what's that unbeliever going to say? This is a bunch of gibberish. That's how you can tell some of these so-called pastors are actually unbelievers. Right? That's why Paul said it. There's nobody there to interpret. Keep silent. And speak to God with your tongues. Personally. How many times, saints of God, have you gone to a church ministry you was invited to? And what did you see? The boastful pastor on the stage going like this. And you're just like, man, this guy is so immature. That's an immature pastor. He's a pastor who wants attention. And he thinks if he does that tongue on the microphone, all of a sudden everybody's going to be like, whoa, this man came off a mountain somewhere. He speaks tongues. It don't work that way. You're supposed to shut your mouth, pastor, according to the word. If there's nobody there to interpret. And see, it's fake Christians like that who have helped fuel this thing online where now people are calling tongues gibberish altogether and saying tongues don't exist at all. You see what I'm saying? It's like if I take a stick and I poke at an animal in a cage and the animal's like, yo, yo, chill, yo, stop, man. Yo, yo, yo stop, man. Just, yo, bro, 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 yo, stop, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, yo, stop, man. Eventually, what's the animal gonna do? Like, all right, you, you, you bugging now. He's gonna start rumbling the cage. See, they poked that other Christians so much about that. It made Christians feel hurt inside. How dare you tell somebody they don't have the Holy Spirit? What made you, what? <laughs> Woo! Do you, now I got a testimony. I'm, I'm not gonna do it now because it's a long testimony. But just know, in the beginning of my walk, the Lord delivered me from a spider web ministry. I call them spider web ministries. They're ministries that draw you in with gnosis and bind you there. Where it's almost like you can't get away, and they hold you captive. Right? You have the the sacred namers and all of these people. They want to captivate you with this hidden. Uh, knowledge of God that if you don't have it, you're damned, right? Forget all of that. The true revelations of Jesus Christ are given to those who have love and that know how to love God in truth and spirit. Good love is not an emotion. See, that's where people get it confused. Now listen, when they try to bewitch me, everybody was speaking in tongues. Even one of my, my brothers I used to be in the streets with, gang banging with and all of that. Even him got caught up in it. Because what happens is they get intimidated to the point where they either start to worry more about what people feel about them and less about what Christ feels about them. So they end up faking the tongues. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or And it's real. Some of them practice in the mirror. You ever met some Christian? It's the same tongue they speak every single time. Literally. It's the same thing. And next week, next week, for, for three months straight. That's the only, come on, man. God don't repeat himself like that. It got to be some kind of new tongues coming out you, bruh. But you got to be careful. I, I'm going to give a warning across the board. This is healthy. This is mature. This is coming from a general of the gospel. I have fire on me right now. I pray that you will feel what I feel someday. And some of y'all have fire on you. It's an amazing feeling. And that's how God confirms that he's burning his word through my back, through my stomach, out from my belly to you. And I'm not saying that to wow you. I'm just trying to tell you how I feel right now. God goes from glory to glory. But this is my healthy warning. One of the biggest warnings that you could take heed to in this last hour. Stop being a tongue inspector. It's not worth it. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. It don't matter if nine out of ten times you were right. And you looked at your brother and was like, <laughs> that's a demon in him speaking. <laughs> that's gibberish. Because the one time you could be wrong, and it be the Holy Ghost in that person. Oh my God. 
please take my advice. Watch your mouth. Even if you know, you feel it. Watch how you respond to people that speak in tongues. We know there's many that are faking it. But that's about, there's a, there's a shift taking place. There's a change taking place. You hear me? The true saints of God that are in their secret place, that are praying and fasting while others are laughing and eating. They are denying themselves while others are taking their fill and pleasure. They're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and they're going to have all the gifts in the book with the fruit to govern it. And there's nothing you once saved, always saved, Baptist mockers will do about it. But block your ears and want to kill us. Now listen, don't say I didn't warn you. Because if you mock the Holy Ghost speaking out of somebody, it can be an unforgivable sin. Listen to me carefully, and I'll say it again. Charles Lawson has space to repent. John MacArthur has space to repent. And others like them that are telling you that speaking evil about the Holy Ghost is forgivable. Dangerous. You hear what I'm saying? Dangerous. Go over there with that. I already told you. For y'all saints of God that are over here. That know better. That know exactly what Jesus said. I don't care what another man says. What did Jesus say? It says he said that because they spoke evil of the Holy Ghost. Because he said he had a demon. That's why he said if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. If you speak evil of the Holy Ghost. Because that's what they were doing. They said he had a demon. He would, they said he was casting out devils by a uh, devil, by Bezalbub. And if it was, it was the Holy Ghost in Jesus doing it. So they were calling the Holy Ghost, my God. So watch your mouth. Now listen, let's move forward. We got to keep going with this, right? So I dealt with that first, just to be fair. Because ain't nobody going to try to falsely accuse me and be like, you're just one of those apostolic people that make everybody speak in tongues. Nah, no, you ain't playing that witchcraft over here. We are not a denomination. Therefore, we're not caught up in their little lies. We are simply followers of Jesus Christ. And because I got a beard don't mean I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Such foolishness. The way some of y'all judge people by their appearance. Do you know Jesus had a beard? You do know this, right? <laughs> David had a beard. God have mercy, Lord. So let's go. We got to keep moving here, right? So what the other side will say is this. Oh, one more thing I want to say. In John chapter 3, verse 34, if we could just go there real quick. This should seal it up, at least when it comes to that topic of tongues. Because, you know, some of y'all needed to hear that to be liberated. Some of y'all were being pressured by witchcraft workers trying to force you to speak in tongues. To the point where you were believing them. Oh, I don't got the Holy Spirit. I'm, Lord, you don't love me, Jesus. I mean, that's terrible. When these witchcraft workers will make a Christian think that God is not even with them. Because they didn't speak tongues. That's what they tried to do with me. And the Lord protected me. He defended me. I didn't have Google to save me. I had to go through the scriptures by hand. And find what thus says the Lord. And when I brought that pastor into his office. It was just me, him, and the Holy Ghost he was coming against. And I looked him in his eyes. And I said, you know you lying to the people. You better be careful, sir. You fighting Christ. That man stuttered like Moses and I walked away. And that's glory to God. He does have servants of the Most High God that he sends to speak a message. And a lot of y'all brothers and sisters are brewing up in the, in the fire of God getting ready to speak a message. Now listen. This is in John. I want to show you this now. Chapter 3. Verse 34, look at what it says in Jesus' mighty name. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure to him. Listen carefully. That means that Jesus Christ was the only to ever walk the earth 
that was filled with the Holy Ghost always. He was given the Holy Spirit without measure. That means that you and I are given the Holy Spirit by measure. That means you're not always, you ever hear these Christians, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost every day. No, you're not. See, these are immature statements. They just lack knowledge. No one can handle being filled with the Holy Ghost 24-7. You know how much power? When you hear me preaching a message and I'm like, I can't handle this. I'm, I'm being for real with you. You remember when Moses lifted up the rod and he couldn't handle it? He was like, ah, and he needed two to help him. This is where the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> ah, that's another message. The Holy Ghost will rise up in a saint when it's needed. See, Jesus breathed on them in the Gospel of John and said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. What these over here will say is, well, technically they didn't really receive the Holy Spirit then. He was telling them to get ready. No, that's not what it says. Don't try to play that little funny game with us. And that's why you can you listen, saints, you got to be straight up with people now. See, some of y'all got saved, but you were more tough when you was in the world. Sister, you had a backbone when you was in the world. If somebody disrespected you, you took your earrings off. Now you became a Christian and everybody walks all over you. People lie about the gospel and you don't say nothing. Brother, when you was in the streets, you was the bar fighter. You was the goon on the block. You get saved and all of a sudden you silent when people lie about Jesus. I say fight in the spirit, not the flesh. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Stop being a coward. Come on. Now listen. They'll say... Oh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost every day. No, the Holy Spirit. When Jesus, when he breathed on them, they received the Holy Spirit. That's step one. That's the beginning. But then you have to tarry until, pray and fast, wait in your spiritual upper room, and get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. That's when he fills in you. You understand? That is it. That is the truth of the matter. But they don't want you to know that. It's either you're filled or you're not. It don't work that way. Because I just read to you, Jesus was the only one given the Holy Ghost without measure. That means, sister, one day you might be more filled with the Holy Ghost than another day. You think God's going to need to fill you with the Holy Ghost? If you're watching a movie on Pure Flakes with your husband? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to fall out and not be able to watch the movie. You see how simple it is? I try to give it to you simple. I'm not here to show off and look smart with proper etiquette. And See, a lot of these people that deceive, they'll write these long, drawn-out posts on Facebook with like really fancy words, and they'll go all over the place. It's designed to, 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 to make you confused to the point where you kind of just give up and submit to what they're saying. By the end of the, by the, end of the stupid comment, you're like, well, I, I guess you're right. Uh, nah, don't let them trick you. Jesus was very simple to the people. He'll look around and be like, the kingdom of heaven is like this bottle. <laughs> These people did just want attention. Now that we dealt with that, let's smash these lies from the pit of hell that tongues is no longer around as it's a bunch of gibberish, right? Here's one of the main things they'll try to lie to you about. They'll go to book of Acts chapter 2. So let's go there. Let, let's go where they go. See, we ain't scared. We got perfect love that cast away what? All fear. Acts chapter 2. Listen to this now in Jesus' name. So as you know, whenever you see the camera, whenever you see editing a lot of time, it's because my camera stops recording after a certain period of time. So I have to get up and hit record again. But... As you know, in the day of Pentecost, in Jesus' name, it says in verse 3 of chapter uh, one, uh, chapter 2, it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see that? You see that? Now watch this. Now watch this. 
And there, and there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And as you know, I believe there's uh, 16 languages, right? And what they'll do to try to trick you is they'll say, you see, tongues is only the tongues of men. Anything else is gibberish. That's what they say. Yes or no. And if you're not taught by a shepherd that loves you and warns you, like we do through Christ, and if you're not studying yourself and having a personal relationship with Christ, I'm telling you, some of these things can actually ensnare some of y'all. You got to do better. You need to seek the Lord more. I'm telling you. As I, I want to be like kind of like a personal trainer. Lioness does too. We want to be personal trainers for y'all to where we push you to do more for Christ. Not to make you feel like you're never good enough. God loves you. But you got to do more. You got to do more. You got to read more. Come on. You got to be a studier. You got to pray more. The Bible says pray without ceasing. huh? But what do they say to you? Well, this is just as simple as this. Uh, these were the tongues of the languages of men, like Arabic or Hebrew or, or uh, Grecian or Egyptian and all the right? And they'll go back to the Tower of Babel and say, See here, the God confounded the languages, and these were the languages of men. Let's smash that right now, shall we? You remember what we just read earlier where Paul said there's diversities of tongues? What does diversities mean? It means there's different tongues, right? Okay. So, and I'm going to save a nugget in the book of Acts for afterwards. Glory be to Christ. Now, what I want to do is simple, crystal clear... Okay, and, and first off, let's deal with this now. Isaiah chapter 8, 19 talks about wizards that peep and mutter. Now, I know there are people that fake tongues, and there are also real sorcerers, real witches that masquerade. They're actually paid and funded by the Illuminati that actually peep and mutter. They curse their hands. And they peep and mutter a strange language. But again, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Remember the analogy of the $100 bill. There's tons of counterfeits all around right now. I remember one time a bank actually gave me a counterfeit. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it slipped through. But I was shocked. Because it was in the midst of the others. This was years ago. I said, yo, this is a fake. Now, how do I go back and explain that to them? But that don't mean I'm never going to want another $100 bill to spend on something again. Money is a weapon in the defense. Now, would you do away with $100 bills if you experience one counterfeit? No. Because you got to study the real to expose the fake. You got to study the real Christ. The real tongues. You'll know the phony when you know the real. But if you've never known the real, you, woo, you better be careful. Now... Here we are. We're going to go through this now. Like I said, we're going to drop a nugget about Acts in a minute. But before we do that, okay, I want to also declare something, okay, that we are to contend for the faith. Amen. Amen. If you go to Jude, just real quick, I want to show you this. Just just because this can't be done out of pride. Some men will do types of videos like this, but they're just doing it out of pride to look smart and educated. It cannot be done that way. Teachers out there that love the Lord, you can't expose people that are evil or teaching false, and you can't fight false doctrine with pride because you're going to nullify the effect. You have to do it out of a place of love to save those that are bewitched, not to prove they're wrong and you're right. If you have that spirit, it won't work. I needed to say that because some of y'all needed to hear that. But if you go to Jude chapter 1, look what it says in verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto the common, write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 
You see that? You are to contend for the faith. 2 Timothy, just one more. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's get it. Come on. Some of y'all are like, brother, hurry up. I'm already there. Look what he's doing. Chapter 3, 16. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. So I'm here to correct. Okay? Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And thank you, Lord, for the saints that are already in the truth with us. Now, listen, let's go ahead now. Let's deal with this. The first thing we're going to smash is the lie that tongues is only the tongues of actual languages on the earth. Because that's one of the, the number one things they're going to say to you to try to trick you. We're going to smash that right now in the name of Jesus. You ready for it? Glory be to Christ. See, he'll give you a word of wisdom that your enemies cannot gainsay nor resist if you're with him. The Holy Ghost will speak through you. <laughs> First Corinthians 14. Look at what it says. Come on. Let's move with it. Let's be quick. Come on. In Jesus' mighty name. Chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. So Paul is writing to a huge church. Corinthians was huge. This was common. Gifts and miracles was everywhere. But we're in the great falling away, saints. See, this. there's two main reasons why the power is not moving the way it should. The power is moving, but not the way you a lot of people expect it to. Power moves through this ministry. People can testify to miracles that Christ has done through this ministry. But without love, it's nothing. You see the difference? But the two main reasons why people are doubting in the power and the gifts... The reason why they're not seeing it, two reasons. One, sin in the camp. Many Christians that you think because they cry on Sunday, they can sing lovely in the choir because the pastor got a nice suit, but he's fornicating with the secretary when everybody leaves the building. They're defiled, filthy dreamers. Even their consciences are seared. They sin and the Holy Ghost is holy. He's not going to dance around in a sinful person. It don't work that way. You can't repent, get the blood on you, then go back to the club, fornicate. Repent, get the blood on you, then go back to the club and fornicate. Repent, get... No. You could put Christ to an open shame and actually catch a reprobate mind. You see the difference. But it's mainly sin. We have to live holy. The Bible says, be you holy. Why is God commanding us to be righteous and holy, but yet we can live any way we want because we're sealed unto the day? You know how many people misinterpret that? We're in the hands of Christ and neither height nor depth. They misinterpret these scriptures. Yes, nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But you can walk away, though. That's, see, that's what they don't want to tell people. Right? Number two, after sin, number two is doctrines of devils that teach people to resist the Holy Ghost. Do you know how many millions of Christians believe these damnable lies? That there is no longer a baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire, a extra work of faith because we're commanded to go into an upper room. Charles Lawson calls it an extra work of faith, grace. No, no, this is still now. But because so many, because the majority of ministries resist the Holy Ghost. And remember what he said to them. He was talking to religious people. He said, you resist the Holy Ghost. It's still happening, saints. It may not be the Pharisees and Sadducees of Israel, but it's Christians now. Resisting the Holy Ghost by saying there is no tongues, it's all gibberish, there's no more prophecy, there's no more gifts, there's no more upper room. That's resisting the Holy Ghost. So it's those two things. But believe this, there are true saints of God, and a lot of them are listening to this message right now, that believe in the power. They believe in the whole, oh God, I feel you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I love you, Lord. They believe in the Holy Ghost. They believe in the gifts. 
And they're not losing faith just because they haven't spoken tongues yet. They're going to keep seeking the Lord. They're going to keep praying and fasting. They're going to keep going into their upper room. They're going to tarry until God is not a butler. You clap your hands and say, Jesus, make me speak in tongues. It's not a light switch. You wait for him. Be patient. Long suffering. When I got filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and baptized, it wasn't the same day I was baptized by water. I had to, I had to play, you know, some people don't realize it, but God in a way, he plays hard to get. And uh, some of y'all are like, what did he just say? I don't mean like in a worldly way. I mean, he's not just going to fill you with the Holy Ghost if he knows you're not ready. He don't want to set you up for that. If you still madly and douse, God forbid, if a person is, is saturated in pornea, you know what I'm saying? He got saturated in pornea. He's got five booty calls on his phone. And, and because he feels warm and fuzzy one Sunday, he goes to church and gets baptized. Holy Ghost, fall on me. Yeah, but the Holy Ghost know what you're going to do in two days. You see? Be patient, saints. Don't give up. Take it from my wife and I. We have pursued God. He says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. To seek something means you got to keep looking for something until you find it. Knock and it shall be opened. How many of y'all, ooh, this is a good word. How many of y'all have ever gone to a friend's house? You know the car is in the driveway. You knock, knock, knock. Ain't nobody come to the door. You like, man, stop playing with me. Knock, 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 ding dong. Ain't nobody come to the door. If you're a true friend and that car is in the driveway, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the window. Now, some of y'all crazy. <laughs> go to the window, throw a pebble up on the third floor apartment. You know what I'm saying? Go to the back door. You know what I mean? Hey, yo. Oh, I'm in the shower, bro. I didn't know you was knocking. You don't give up until that brother or sister come to the door. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Why are you giving up? Are you a friend of Christ or not? Who goes to someone's house? They see the car in the driveway. They knock once, wait 30 seconds, and then be like, oh, well, the door must not exist. <laughs> no, be patient. He will come to you. Prove your repentance by your deeds, the Bible says. That's Bible words. Now listen. Now... I saved it. I, I had to build it up for this. Now listen, it's how we gonna crush their little doctrine of devil in Jesus' name. Y'all ready for it? Watch how simple this is. Now look at this. Verse two: For he that speaketh in a what unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For some men. Now nah, that's not what my Bible says. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit, he speak mysteries. Let me ask you a question to the intelligent, God-fearing saints that are listening. If what they're saying is true, the only tongues that exist are the tongues of men. They're languages. And if you speak in a tongue, there'll be a language where somebody will know, like the 16 languages in Acts chapter 2. It'll either be in Hebrew or Spanish or Greek. And Wait a minute. This said an unknown tongue that no man understands. God don't lie and the word don't lie. So if it says no man, it means no man. It don't matter where you are in the world. If it's the unknown tongue, no man understands it. That means it can't be a language of men. Right there, they're done. Go to Auntie Lena. Go to the interlinear. Do whatever you want. You are done with your false lie. Praise God for the saints that know the truth. You see that? It's, it clearly says now, right? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. What does unknown mean? It means it's unknown. If it's an English tongue, it's known. If it's a Spanish tongue, it's known. If it's Hebrew, if it's Arabic, is it not known? But why do they call it unknown? Because it's unknown. That no man knows. That's what it just said. Smash the doctrine with one verse, you know. That's how good God is. This ain't arrogance. This is confidence in Christ. What kind of soldier does not love the sword he swings? Huh. 
next one. We going to smash the doctrines of devils even more. Go to Corinthians 13. Listen to what Paul says. In verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And have not love. I'm like brass metal banging together. Number one, before we even get in the tongues, you need love. I need love. We all need love. Or prophecy is irrelevant. Tongues are irrelevant if we don't have love. Because love stops you from boasting. Love stops you from thinking you're better than another sister who don't speak in tongues. Love helps you to speak in tongues accurately. It's love you need. Right? But listen to what he said though. He said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Why would Paul mention the tongues of angels? I want to teach you correctly through Christ. Listen, saints. The diversities of tongues is not just human languages. We just proved that in Corinthians 14. There are unknown languages that no man knows. That smashes their lie right there. When they try to bring you to Acts 2 and say, these 16 languages, that's the only tongues, is tongues that are languages on the earth. Bring them right to Corinthians 14 and smash them with it. Smash that devil in them with it. But listen, listen to this. The diversities of tongues is this. The gift of tongues can allow you to speak an un, uh, another language on the earth. I remember I didn't know Spanish and, and I was crying. My wife was with a sister and my wife was embracing. See, my wife has a gift of compassion. Such a compassionate woman. Anybody that would hate on Lioness... Is someone I won't even want around me. Because, see, a lot of times I'll know somebody's fruit by how they treat my wife. My wife ain't perfect. None of us are perfect. But she's such a compassionate woman. She loves Jesus so much. You see what I'm saying? So, if you love me, it's by nature you're going to love Lioness. If you love Lioness, by nature you're going to love me. And those with us. And hopefully you're with us because we love you. Fist bump, come on. Come on, let's hug it out. Let's hug it out, saints. Now listen. Now listen. The tongues of men, where that day when my wife had that sister, I think she was a prostitute. She was crying on my wife's shoulder. I was over praying with a man who didn't even speak English. He spoke Spanish. And I was crying out, and my tongue loosened, and I started to be like, Santo! And I, I was like, what did I just say? And I found out it means holy. I spoke in the tongues of men. By the Holy Ghost. By the Spirit. So there's tongues of men. There's tongues of angels. And then there's the actual tongue of the Holy Spirit. That's not for everybody. That's deep. See, there's levels to this. But it's depending on your walk, your desire, your faith, your obedience. How are you living? The word of God, listen to me. There's no one that can refute this, what I'm about to say. Do you know the scripture says the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him? Think about that. Well, it's by grace, hallelujah, and I can be a whore and be sanctified and sealed and filled. Not according to what that scripture just said. The Holy Spirit is given to those who obey them. Now listen to me. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's a fun sermon, actually. I started off bold, and yes, I'm angry at the wicked. But the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Come on now. Come on now. See, a lot of y'all, y'all picking the wrong fight with the wrong saints. We are not cowards, and we ain't playing with you. Come with this. Come with this. And if you don't come with this, I'm erasing your stupid comment. You hear what I'm saying to you? And shout out to the believers. We love y'all comments. All glory to Christ. He's the one who defends us. I know nothing but what Christ gives me to speak. Hallelujah. Now listen. Think about this. Demons are sent to spy out what you do. Did you know that? Just like how the devil will send people to pretend to come around. We've had them. Spies. They come and go. Right? Right? But the devil also sends demons to spy on you, right? And they actually take notes. 
They actually monitor you and go back and tell a certain principality of power that tells another uh, ruler of darkness that, that gives the, the information to Satan about you. The reason tongues is so important is not more important than prophecy. Prophecy is actually more important, but tongues is still important, right? Listen to this. There'll be a time you'll be praying to the Lord and God will see demons trying to figure you out. Remember, the darkness don't comprehend the light. When Jesus fills in you with the light, darkness is like, what's going on? I can't understand. I can't see. See, that's the brightness of the light. But the vi Ooh, I'm catching something. Did you know light vibrates? I'm catching revelation. Everything vibrates. Did you know that? Everything is vibrating. The cells in your body are vibrating, right? Everything is really making noise if you think about it. So not only does God want the devils to be blinded by the brightness of Christ, he wants their ears to not comprehend the words of Christ. Huh? Huh? So when you're speaking to Jesus, oh, I feel your fire, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I don't care if I'm on camera or not. When I feel the fire of God, I just be like, wow. There will be times where the demons will be trying to figure what you have planned and what God wants you to do. So what God will do is have you speak in the tongue of an angel or the tongues where the Holy Ghost himself will speak through you. And your tongue will loosen and ah, and there will be a certain language and the demons are scratching their head going, I don't know what he just said. I don't know what she's saying to God now. See, it, it confounds them. <laughs> You see, woo listen to this, saints. I told you this is going to be one of the greatest messages on tongues. I declared it. I spoke it into life because I have confidence in the Holy Ghost, not my flesh. The same way God confused the Tower of Babel, the people, now what he does is he gave languages to the children of God and he confuses the demons. You see, he put that curse on the demons this time. When now, when we speak in an unknown tongue, the demons are the ones going, oh, I can't understand them. See, that's why tongues is so important. When you pray in an unknown tongue, God knows exactly what you're saying. And he'll give his back to you. And that's why it's important too. Not everybody should be like, Lord, I want to speak in tongues. Because some of y'all need to ask to be an interpreter. We need interpreters. You hear me? Now listen to this. The night, I, I don't want to say, I say this testimony a lot. I'm going to be quick with it. God called me one night into the prayer closet. It was late at night. I, I wrestled with him two, three times. I finally went. He fell on me. I cried out. All of a sudden, it was no longer my voice. My wife woke up because the closet, the house we were living at and renting out, the closet was right in front of the bed. You know what I'm saying? And she woke up like terrified because she knew at that moment the Holy Ghost, Jesus of Nazareth, was literally speaking through her husband. Think about how, how terrifying it was. She knew it was no longer my voice. And, and it was like a Hebrew, Arama Aramaic language. It was so beautiful. Do you know God showed me what that was? And I was just so, like, amazed by it. He showed me in Galatians. Just, just real quick, I want to show you this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you so much, Lord. Look at Galatians now. He, it, and I, because I was like, Lord, why was my voice not my voice anymore? It was literally a completely different voice. This is what he showed me in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son. Who's that? Jesus Christ. Into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Many people read that and just read through it. It says that Jesus will, will be sent into you and he will cry out of you. Why? Because a lot of times we don't know what we should pray for. So Jesus himself will take over the wheel and be like, man, you driving all over the place. Give me the wheel. Father, because he'll know what to say to the Father for you. Now I went ahead, I was going, I'm going ahead of myself, I, I, I got to slow down. So, that night, Christ, the Holy Ghost spoke through me, 
You see what I'm saying? Now, so the demons want to try to spy out. But did you know also, <laughs> did you know that, as deep, should I give it to them, Lord? I, they can't, a lot of them ain't going to handle that, Lord. No offense, I'm just being real with y'all. All I'll say is this. Do you remember, Stephen? What did it say about Stephen? And and uh, if we go to it just real quick. It, no, as a matter of fact, you just read it on your own time. In Acts chapter 6, read the whole chapter. It said that Stephen had the face of an angel. That's all I'm going to say. So there are certain tongues of angels that are actually to communicate that Christ through you will actually communicate to angels. <laughs> We going deeper with it, y'all. This is stuff because tongues is mocked so much. We have to come with the consolation and the encouragement to show you the amazing mysteries of tongues. Hallelujah. So now, thirdly, we talked about tongues of men, which is a fact. Which is, that's the common one a lot of believers will get. But then there's the tongues of angels. Paul wouldn't have mentioned it if it didn't exist. And trust me, he said, though I speak more tongues than all of y'all, though I have, I know all mysteries. Paul spoke the tongues of angels, period, and the tongues of men, and obviously the Holy Ghost spoke through them. Now listen to this. Third is what? What did I tell you? It's when Jesus himself, the Holy Ghost will speak through you. Go to Romans chapter 8. And remember when I told y'all, be careful of these people that mock you ready for it? Watch this. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Look at what it says. My camera is about to die. I'm going to I'm gonna have to charge it. But uh, check this out. I tell you, it's, it's, it's bananas when the power of God will manifest so strong. Even technology like batteries will start draining really fast. It's, it's really supernatural, saints. I'm telling you. Romans chapter 8. Look at what it says in verse 26. Now remember there's three main diversities of tongues. The tongues of men. When you're able supernaturally to speak another language so you can bring the gospel to other nations. Where if you go there and you don't know their language, the Holy Ghost can speak through you in their language. He'll teach you. Then there's the tongues of angels. Now the most terrifying one is what I'm about to talk about. This is very... It's reserved, and it's for a select people. But listen to this. Go to Romans chapter 8. Look at what it says. In the name of Jesus, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Look at what it says in Jesus' name. Likewise, the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. Remember I said that? How God will send forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Jesus will cry to the Father through us. That's amazing. Now listen. But the Spirit itself making intercession for us with groanings. Which cannot be uttered. What do you think that is? Come on saints. Go to Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1. Look at what it says. Obviously chapter 1 right? There's only one chapter in Jude. But look what it says in verse 20. But you beloved. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You see that. And again, Galatians 4, 6, where Christ himself, the Holy Spirit of Christ, will cry out through us. This is why you cannot just, you know, there are some people who have literally mocked the Holy Ghost without knowing it. Because they've been taught a doctrine of... De See, demons don't care as long, especially if they can get somebody to blaspheme the Holy Ghost... They won because blaspheming the Holy Ghost is the unforgivable sin. You see that? That's why you have to just shut your mouth and stop trying to be the tongue judger. Now, granted, yes, so many people fake, but is it worth you mocking real tongues? 
I'm telling you, I speak in tongues. It's real. But it's nothing to boast over. So this smashes their whole doctrine right here. Because what we just did was go through the scriptures. You understand? We're going through the scriptures, saints. Now, I want to... I want to go to Proverbs, I know, Proverbs 9, just real quick, write it down, I'll read it, in Jesus' mighty name, look what it says in verse 7, he that reproveth a scorner gets, get himself shame, and he that rebukes a wicked man gets himself a blot, this means when I come at somebody, wh whether it was Charles Lawson or any of these others, the people that are listening and following them, they don't want to hear nothing except what? They're coming at me to fight me. And I was able to endure that, the suffering and the, the false accusations to bring the truth to y'all saints. Because there was a lot of y'all saints that were on the fence not knowing and almost getting bewitched and believing there's no more tongues. And I'm here to say, hey... If I have to be persecuted by tons of Christians who mock tongues just to reach the ones who are called out, it's worth it to my wife and I and to others with us. We're not saying, hey, we're excited to get persecuted, but we rejoice through it because there's a reward that comes with it. Now, listen, here's, here's the thing that we have to establish, okay, that in the last days, if you go to 2 Peter... Let's be quick now. Second Peter chapter uh, 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Look what it says now. In verse 3. Who's adorning... Le oh, hold on. Second Peter. I'm in first Peter. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Knowing this first, there that there shall be... There shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old. You see that? So these are the scoffers that shall walk around in the end days, right? Jude, we were just in Jude. Go back to Jude. Okay, I want to, uh, 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You see this, these are these once saved, always saved, these mockers of tongues and gifts and they want to mock us. Hey, one guy type, hey, uh, can you interpret my tongue? Blah, 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 ha, ha, ha. These are mockers. This prophecy is actually coming to pass, saints. And this is what you got to realize. First Timothy Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. First Timothy chapter four. Go to chapter four. Look at what it says. Verse 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What were we taught in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ? That we are saved by grace, that we have to prove our repentance by our deeds, that we have to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow after Jesus, whom we accept as the Son of God, who died for our sins and rose from the dead and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. We were taught that God is not mocked, that we cannot turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Right? We were taught these things, saints. Grace was never supposed to be a doormat. It was supposed to be the door. You understand? And this is what has happened is they have departed from the faith. They have departed from the gifts, from the power of God. But what does 2 Timothy say? It says, they will have a form of godliness, but what? Deny the power from such people. Stay away from, it says. It says, stay away from them. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, that that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition.
This is the great falling away. How do you think the great falling away is starting? By denying the Holy Ghost, the fruit, the power, the gifts, mocking tongues. This is the falling away. And what the enemy is doing now, I'm going to show you, and this is prophetic what I'm saying to you. Glory to the Holy Ghost. He's doing the switcheroo. He's taking away the faith from believers to believe in the gifts and the power. And then he's going to present the Antichrist false prophet who's got crazy gifts and power. And they're going to be oohed and odd over this. All the while they rejected the true gifts and power. It's, it's terrifying, saints. So Luke 16, I just want to show you real quick. Luke 16. I proved this in the other video, but many didn't watch the whole thing. Because, you know, people really can't handle the fiery furnace when, when they got demons in them. You know, to remain in this video to the end, I give you credit for real. So we at Luke 16. Look at what it says. In verse 24, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. Remember, remember what I said earlier. Why the tongue? The tongue is what got him there. Watch your mouth. I'm telling you, be careful, be slow to speak and be led by the Lord. I had to be in prayer to publicly rebuke the false teachings of certain people. You have to be led in prayer, you understand? But this is the great falling away. Remember what, what 2 Timothy chapter 3 says, In the last days perilous times shall arise. Men shall be lover of themselves, boasty, proud, high-minded, blasphemers, blasphemers. They're blaspheming, you understand? Despisers of those that are good. Us saints, you brothers and sisters and us, we're striving to live holy. We're not trying to earn our way into heaven. We're not going back to the law. See, they can't play that little reverse psychology on us. We know it's by grace. But we are striving to live holy as he is holy. We are striving not to be adulterers, fornicators, drunkards, sorcerers. He said those will not inherit the kingdom. He was writing to the church. Think about this. Right? But they despise those that are good. Well, what does it say at the bottom, though? It says they will have a form of godliness, but deny the power from such people stay away from. Did you know anybody, it don't matter if it's Charles Lawson, any of them, if they deny that power, if they deny tongues and all of that, you're supposed to stay away from them. They can say all here, but if in their lifestyle and in their actions, they deny the power, you're supposed to stay away from them. Now, listen, as we're moving along now, we're moving along, right? I want to show you something. Hold on. Now listen. Chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. Look at what it says now in verse 4 going down. Now there are diversities of, diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit gives the gifts, right? Now watch this. We're going to smash their doctrine with the power of Christ and with the sword of the Spirit. Watch this. Because they say the gifts are gone, right? The gifts have ceased. Watch this. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now it's talking about the gifts now. For to one is given by the same Spirit the word of wisdom. That's a gift. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. Now these are the gifts, right, that they say ceased? Think of how stupid that sounds. Are you telling me the gift of faith is gone? According to these false teachers, if the gifts have ceased, then that means you got to tell us that faith has ceased. Knowledge has ceased. Last time I checked, we have the knowledge of Christ being revealed to us. How could you have grace without faith? <laughs> See, y'all done played yourself. Saints of God, they done played themselves, didn't they? Because they said the gifts have ceased. You can't say some gifts ceased and some crept through. And endured 2,000 years. They're saying the gifts have ceased. 
So if the gifts, according to here, these are the gifts, right? Then that means there's no more faith. And how do you receive the grace of God without faith? <laughs> yeah. See, God will give you a word of wisdom that none can gain, say, nor resist. He knows this book better than them devils teaching these people. Right there, that destroys a whole doctrine. Did you know that? We can end it right here. And this is the scripture that they'll actually try to use. Now, saints, watch how these serpentine spirits and people will try to twist scriptures. You have to know the word and above everything, you better know the author of the scripture. They'll go to 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 8 going down. They'll say, charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And, you know, they'll usually stop at whether there be tongues, it shall cease. And they take that and go, see, tongues has ceased. Right? But let's, let's read. Let, let's see if what they're saying is true, though. So it says that knowledge also shall vanish away. Do we have knowledge still to this day of Jesus Christ? For we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect come, then that which is in part shall be done away. You see, it's talking about the return of Christ. But they'll try to twist that scripture and be like, you see there, it says that tongues shall cease. So that's a bunch of gibberish. They are blaspheming. And they're taking scriptures out of context. Because if that's the case, the knowledge is gone too. Yes or no, saints? God is not going to take prophecy and tongues away, but keep knowledge. And the last time I checked, we need to have the knowledge of Christ and the kingdom of heaven. We are here to smash their doctrines of devils with the sword of the spirit in Jesus' mighty name. But let's go further. Hebrews 13, 8. What does it say? Come on, we're going to wrap this up. We can do a part two of this. I'm, I'm, I'm joyfully laughing because our beloved brothers and sisters are being liberated and set free from demonic lies. The demons and people are being exposed and hopefully some are going to get delivered that are holding on to these doctrines of devils. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8. Look at what it says in Jesus' mighty name. Y'all ready for it? Watch this. Watch this. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I am the Lord God. I change not. So you're saying Jesus changed up. That he's no longer baptizing in the Holy Ghost and fire. And the Holy Ghost is no longer giving the gifts. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? Just out of fun, just for the fun of it, go to Mark 16 real quick. I want to show you something. Watch this. This is one of my favorite points that the Lord revealed to me. Jesus speaking now. Go to all of the world, verse 15, and preach the gospel to every creature. That's a command, right? That didn't cease, did it? You fake, once saved, always saved. Baptist, gifts have ceased, tongues is gibberish, people. You better repent, you generation of vipers. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Using the grace of God as a napkin to wipe your sinful lips. Listen to this. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Does that still apply? Of course it does, right? That didn't cease, right? So if that didn't cease, verse 17 can't cease. What does verse 17 say? And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Not the, the original church, not the 12 apostles. Anyone who believes in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You see that? It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. That didn't cease. You can't say verse 16 still applies, but verse 17 got left 2,000 years ago. Doesn't work that way. Again, you're stumbling and you know it, you false teachers. Saints of God, it's time to celebrate the truth of Christ triumphing over the lies of devils. Now listen, we're bringing all this together, right? Let's, let's move now to Acts chapter... Uh, um, a, a, say that again. Let's go to Acts chapter 1 real quick. Come on, we're moving here. We're moving here. Acts chapter 1. 
Look at what it says in Jesus' name. Verse 8. Woo. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See, what a lot of these slick preachers do is they'll say, I believe in the power. It's the power of God. But what they're telling you is they don't believe that we can have the power of the Holy Ghost. They don't believe that we can get filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire with the gifts and with the fruit and all of that. That's the difference. Now, look at this. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Let me ask you a question. Because what they'll try to say is this was only for the beginning of the church, right? But how is that possible? Jesus said that we should bring the gospels to the uttermost parts of the earth. Did Paul, Peter, James, John, did they reach America? Did they reach South America? Did they go to Australia? If that's the case, then that means they failed the mission. No, that's not what Jesus was saying. He was prophesying. He was saying the church will have power and these signs shall follow. And you are going to go to the uttermost ends of the earth. You see, the apostles were just the beginning pillars that spread it out. But saints of God, we're still going to the uttermost parts of the earth. See, that was a prophecy Jesus spoke. Because the disciples didn't go to the four ends of the earth. No, they did not. They started to. You see, that proves they don't know what they're talking about. Now watch this. Now remember, make sure you read 1 Corinthians 14. So you know, you know, that prophecy is, is very important. We need more people to prophesy and gifts of healing and all of that. But never forget that love has to be... Covering all of it. Remember, knowledge puffs up, but love what? Edifies. You see that? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to breeze through the book of Acts. I want to prove to you without a shadow of a doubt that they're lying to you. Watch this. Go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Because they say that the Holy Ghost baptism um, was a one-time event on the day of Pentecost, right? Isn't that what they, they, they try to lie to you, right? Okay. Verse 44, while Peter yet spoke these words, now this talk about the Gentiles, this is when he went to Cornelius' house, watch this, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were what? Astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was, the, was uh, poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with what? New tongues and magnify God. Then said Peter, can any man forbid water? You just heard that, right? Now go to 11 and watch how Peter is. He's telling the brethren about what happened. Watch chapter 11 now. We're going to go to verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them just as on us in the beginning. Then remembered I the words of the Lord that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And what else did John say in the other gospel? And with fire. Wait a minute. Why did Peter say Cornelius, way after the book of, um, way after the day of Pentecost, he said they were baptized just as we were on the day of Pentecost. Same exact thing. So how could it have been a one-time event? Peter just proves it. <laughs> Only pride would stop the ears from accepting this truth right here. I'm not giving my opinion. I'm bringing the word with the Holy Ghost backing it. It has nothing really to do with me. I'm just a messenger bringing the truth. And I'm enjoying this ride where I'm in the passenger seat. Jesus is driving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You could also read Acts chapter 8. Read it. Okay, but we're going to go to chapter 19. I want to show y'all something. Look at what it says in Jesus' name, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding a certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not known there was uh, heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. You see that? 
And he said unto them, what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John truly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people, they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now listen. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore, saints. You got to realize something. This is the great falling away. This means it's harder to find it now. You understand? Harder to find it. Because of all the sin in the churches. Because of all the doctrines of devils that are being received. Listen, the masses believe that. That's why we get struck at. And that's why if you notice, most of the comments was nothing but demonic comments. No scriptures, nothing. You stupid idiot, look at your beard. Look at you, you devil. You're the devil. <laughs> what are we in kindergarten? Bring this. Shut your mouth, you serpentine people. Bring this. And saints of God, we love you so much. Remember, brothers and sisters, we're preaching to multiple different people. I would love it where I don't have to do that. Because you're not the only ones that watch these videos. We get people that watch the videos that hate Christ. Pharisees. Spies. All type of people. I pray y'all get saved. All you spies. All you Pharisees. You wicked people that masquerade as saints. You masquerade as Christians. You, you drive by the sinners. You look at them as filthy rags. You yourself are even filthier though. Because you know Christ and still live a life of sin and wipe your lips with the grace napkin. Don't you disrespect grace. It is by grace we're saved. Not so you could go back to your sinful life. Generation of vipers and adulterers, the Bible says. But shout out to the saints of God. Amen. Now listen. I saved the nugget for the end. Are you ready for it? In the name of Jesus Christ. Here we go. So this is how I want to bring everything together. Okay. I want you to go to the Old Testament. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Let's go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at what it says now. We're going to start at verse 5 going down. But unto Hannah. He gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for, to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. I need you to see this now. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked so she provoked her so she provoked her therefore she wept and did not eat fasting okay then said elkanah her husband to her hannah why weepest thou and why eatest not and why is thy heart grieved am i not better to thee than 10 sons so hannah rose up after that they had eaten in shiloh and after they had drunk now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Listen to this. And she vowed a vow and said, Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give, the, give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then will I give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, which actually means grace in Hebrew, she spoke her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought, she had been drunken. Sound familiar? And Eli said unto her, How long will you be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. But Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor drink, strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Pause right there. 
pause right there. I'm going to show you a here's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Where the revelation of Jesus Christ ministries, right? This is the revelation the Lord wants you to see. What would be the odds that in Acts chapter 2, go to Acts chapter 2, hallelujah. In the same verse. Are you ready for this? Watch this now. Acts chapter 2, verse 13. This is after the disciples uh, spoke in tongues. Right? Verse 13 says, Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. What would be the odds that it's verse 13 in the book of Acts, and it's verse 13, <laughs> my God. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. It's verse 13 in 1 Samuel 1. Now, Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Same verse 13. Here's the revelation. It's repeating itself. There's nothing new under the sun. Hannah represents the genuine, sincere church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fasting crying out, sincerely crying out to the Lord for the impregnation of Jesus Christ in the spirit. Oh, this is so good. Remember what Paul said? He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. In the Greek, it means literally as a baby grows in a womb, right? We know God ain't a baby, but he grows in us like a baby. You see that? Jesus does. Now she's crying out for a baby that she will sacrifice and dedicate to the Lord all the days of his life. What would be the odds that Eli mocked her and judged her wrongly? He thought she was speaking some gibberish, but she was crying out to the Lord and the Lord received her tongue. What would be the odds that in the book of Acts... Verse 13, same verse, they mocked and they thought they had wine. Notice how Eli thought the same thing about the wine? Where am I going with this? Did you know that the child that she gave birth to became such a mighty prophet by the name of Samuel? And did you know that when Samuel was a young boy living in that temple with Eli... Eli was actually an error in certain things. Did you, did you know that God used Samuel to grow and actually bring judgment to Eli? What would be the odds that the very same man who judged his mother, God would use that very same child to bring judgment to him? The very same people that are mocking you, brothers and sisters, that speak in sincerity and tongues. You have been praying and fasting and crying out for the filling of the Holy Ghost. Like Hannah wanted to be filled with a child in her womb. The very same people that are mocking now will be the ones that you point at and bring judgment to soon. Judgment must begin in the house of God. And we point with our prophetic finger to you mockers that are mocking us as we are crying out for God and you think we're drunk with wine and we're babbling in goo goo gaga language. You better be careful, you mockers. The same way Eli misjudged her, you're misjudging a lot of us and you don't realize that judgment is going to be spoken the Bible says, judge you righteous judgment. The Bible says, he that is spiritual judges all things. You hear what I'm saying to you? You mockers out there. And shout out to the saints of God who are like the Hannah, using grace correctly. See, that's the mystery of it. These mockers are using grace all the while pushing away the Holy Ghost who presents the grace. They're mockers. And this is the great falling away, saints. Let me explain something to you. Stay away from the crowds, you hear me? Stay away from popularities, you hear me? Jesus was not popular in a good way. They hated him. He started off with hundreds, ended up with 12. Jeremiah would not be popular on Facebook. He would not have 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Watch out for the crowds. Jesus said, broad be the way that leads to destruction and many be there that go. Narrow and straight is the way that leads to life and few be there that go. 
You better know that you know that you know. You better study this word, and you better study the author, and you better know him, and he better know you. Now that's out of love. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let him mock. Let him say we're babbling and, 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 and we're, we're gibberish language. That was my issue with Charles Lawson. Now you see, I'm not playing with him. I'm not playing with none of them. Regardless of how much I love them. You disrespect tongues. You disrespect the Holy Ghost. You disrespect me. Drawing a line in the sand, saints, what side you on? I presented you the truth. If you, if you prayerfully go in your closet and pray about this. Fast if you got to. I pray that yoke is broken off of you. And I pray for the saints that have already been in agreement with me that you're even more encouraged by the scriptures and the ammunition that Christ through me given you, has given you. They mock, just like Eli. All the while, that baby that would be brewing in that woman would come out of her womb and eventually judge him. It's going to be the power of Christ in our womb that's going to judge these mockers. These scoffers that are denying the power, denying the, the gifts. Saints of God, stand firm and pray for us. We need your prayers. Because the more we come against these doctrines and devils, we're fighting demon gods. We're fighting principalities. These people are vicious, you know. We need your prayers. My God. My God. He is so good. We're gonna we're gonna stop there. That's that's gonna be round one of this. In truth, now, no demon in hell that could give a false teacher scriptures can refute, nor gainsay, nor resist against what has been brought here in this video. I get I get no glory. I give all glory to the to the to the King of the Kitchen, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I worship the Holy Ghost who lives in me and speaks through me when I allow him. Amen. Because it's our free will. We have to let him speak through us. He's not going to force us. We have to be willing to let Christ speak through us. And I get no glory. All glory goes to Jesus Christ, the king of the kitchen, who cooked this meal for you. The question is, are you grateful for this meal? Are you going to wipe your lips and walk away? Or are you going to pray with me? Huh? Pray this prayer with me. Just pray the whole prayer so we can cover every angle, okay? Say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, forgive me of all my sins, Lord, known and unknown. Wash me in your holy blood, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Lord, if I've ever blasphemed, if I've ever mocked tongues and blasphemed you, Jesus, I repent, Lord Jesus. I repent for mocking tongues. I repent for doubt and unbelief. Lord, I'll never, I never want to deny the power ever again. Lord, I renounce the doctrines of devils. Once saved, always slave doctrine of a devil. Doing away with the gifts of the Spirit is a doctrine of devil. Holy Ghost, you are mighty. And you have many gifts to give. Lord Jesus, you travel the earth. Looking for those who are willing vessels who will abstain from sin and believe your word. And you are more than excited and happy to not only give us the gift of the Holy Ghost, but the, the gifts that come with the Holy Ghost for the edification and the help and building of the church. Lord, remove every doctrine of demon out of my soul. Every false teaching may it burn up in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, may I seek you, may I seek you, O God, like Hannah. The true grace is not to be taken advantage of. It is to be cherished and treated with the uttermost fear and respect. 
Lord, I love you so much. Help me to be patient as I seek your face and tarry until and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Because just as Cornelius Peter said, the Holy Ghost fell on them just as they did to us in the beginning. Lord, do that to me, Lord, in my house. Say it, saints. Lord, I repent for doubting. I repent for believing these doctrines of devils and these false teachers. Reprogram me, Lord, and teach me the accurate, sharp gospel of Jesus and not another gospel who they preach. I no longer want to deny the power and the gifts. I don't want to live a life of sin and think grace will just get me in. I need to obey you. You give the Holy Ghost to those who obey you. Help me to love you more than my own self and pleasures. Help me to deny myself and pick up my cross and follow after you. Lord Jesus, increase my discernment, which is another one of your gifts, that I may know wolves, no matter how warm and fuzzy they seem, no matter how young or old they may be, no matter how nice they suit is, no matter how many subscribers they got, Lord, show me if they're a wolf or not. And Jesus, I want to commit to studying more. And I want to commit to praying to you more and being more intimate with you. That I'll know a true servant when they're in front of me. And if I've ever mocked tongues, oh God, I'm sorry. I repent, Jesus. Lay no charge upon me in my house. Wash it away in your holy blood. And thank you, Lord. I never want to cross that line and speak evil of the Holy Ghost. Lord, have mercy. Give me wisdom, O oh Lord. Thank you for this message and this word. And bless this ministry, the revelations of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you, God. Don't let the devil take it from me. I want to pray for these that are teaching against tongues and all of these things. That before it's too late, Lord, you save them. Even if you got to blind them like you did Paul on the road to wherever their Damascus is heading. Save them, Lord. Cause Charles Lawson, John MacArthur, and many others to realize the error of their ways. To repent for calling tongues gibberish. Studying years but not knowing. Lord, open up the ears that are blocked. Open up the eyes that can't see. For those that are enemies of the cross and enemies of you or us that's been watching, Lord. Soften their heart to repent, Lord, and get saved. That we don't have to be enemies. Bless the saints that are in agreement. Open up doors and fill them with the gifts. Several as they will Lord. Prophecy and tongues. Healing and knowledge and wisdom and love. Fill them and fill them and fill them Lord Jesus. Fill them with the gift of faith. Lord God. Thank you Lord for this amazing teaching Jesus. I'm so humbled as your servant. And if any of us have ever spoken an unclean tongue, we erase and nullify the peep and muttering. Say it. I erase and nullify any unclean tongues that were ever spoken out of me or over me or curses. I break them now in Jesus name. Any wizardry language, I break it off of me in Jesus name. Lord, and if I've ever faked a tongue, come on, say it. I repent, Jesus. I want to speak true tongues, if it's your will, or prophesy. These signs shall follow, Lord. I want to commit to live holy. I want to commit to believe by faith. And I ask you to anoint me, Jesus, the same way the Father anointed you with the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus, anoint me with the Holy Ghost and power. I never want to reject you again, Holy Spirit. I love you so much, and I'm sorry so many are coming against you. When you want to give us gifts, you want to give us power, you want to move through us and even speak through us. Lord, Holy Ghost, Lord, I'm so sorry, Holy Ghost, Emmanuel, forgive us for the way the church has been treating you. Oh, Jesus, so many are falling away from the faith. They're denying the power. They're denying the gifts. They're denying the upper room Holy Ghost baptism. What's next? They're going to deny you next, Jesus. It's a domino effect. 
I say break that spell off of the hearers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break that curse off of those who want it broken. I break that spell. Those doctrines of devils, I break you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Loosen off of the ears of God's children. Lord, heal their minds from confusion. Heal their minds from discouragement. Heal their minds from unbelief. Fill them with faith, hope, and love. Fill them, Lord. Cause them to want to be filled. You said those who hunger and thirst shall be filled. Fill us with hunger and thirst. And Lord, stop the mouths of those dogs, those blasphemers. Teach them a lesson if you have to. Just like how Paul handed those two men over to Satan. Lord, hand them over to Satan. They want to keep going on Facebook and mocking tongues and mocking this and scoffing. Hand them over to Satan, God. Hand them over to Satan, Lord Jesus Christ. That they may learn not to blaspheme. And let them know that you're against them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Saints of God, that's going to do it. We love you so much. Watch this video again. Take notes. Defend yourself. Defend the word that was delivered unto you, the word of God said in Jude. Contend for the faith. Stop being quiet. You see people, fo po uh, you see people posting trash on Facebook? Stand against it. You see people posting lies on, on YouTube, stand against it. Now there's a line drawn in the sand. Scoffers and mockers, scoffing and mocking and calling tongues gibberish, go over there. Those that don't want the Holy Spirit to fill in them in the upper room, go over there. Once saved, always saved. Want to live a life of sin and wrap yourself in a grace blanket, you nasty sinner. Go over there. But for the elect that want to live holy and righteous, not so we can earn our way into heaven, not to go back to the law, but because grace is a gift, not a doormat. Those that want to speak in tongues and have gifts to the power of God, to the glorification of Christ, and for the edification of the church, come over here. For those that want to prove their repentance by their deeds, come over here. For those who know they are saved by grace, but know they can fall from grace, it's a balance, come over here. There's saints all over the earth that are with us. And it ain't just this ministry. I'm talking about come over here to the truth of the gospel. It's time, saints, to stand against what is wrong. We love you guys so much. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being in this fight with us. Thank you for your prayers and support. We are up against a beast. We need all the help we can get. But never forget that our help comes from the Lord, even when it's coming through you. Isn't that amazing? Pray for us. Pray for me. We're throwing rocks at big principalities that are not happy about this message. Trust me. But if Christ be for us, who could be against us? Hope you enjoyed your meal. Proper etiquette, table manners are important. So when you walk away, be grateful for Christ and for this ministry. In Jesus Christ's name, bless. Jesus Christ. But the devil's in the dark creeping Children taught to hate Another Glock squeezing Another homicide Got the whole block weeping How could God pull his heart out his chest Give it to us in the form of Jesus And we make it stop beating 
falsely accuse him and nail him to the cross bleeding stab him in his side to double check he's not breathing every knee will bow soon you will hear on the third day they checked up in his tomb it was clear and as the world gets covered in darkness like king david if god is my light who shall i fear lord shine on that christian slipping away caught up in the world been too busy to pray lord shine on the children today half the parks are empty cause around here the pistol will spray Jesus Curled up in a ball